Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is coming back, folks, he's coming back, I got a question. Oh, thank you, God bless, man. God bless, I appreciate that, man. God bless, God bless. God bless you guys, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he died for the sins of the world. So, people. Jesus Christ is the Savior, hallelujah, he is the Savior. But many folks, you know that, you hear about it, but you don't understand what he saved you from. You don't understand what he saved you from. A lot of people feel like, well, my life is good, man. My life is good, what did he save me from? Well, the Bible says, all have fallen short from the glory of God, all have sinned. And, and the wages of sin is death. You know, God gave Israel his 10 commandments. And if you break one of God's commandments, you broke the whole law. So, have you stolen before? Have you told a lie before? Have you looked at woman with lust before? That's adultery. All this stuff is sin in the eyes of God, and all of it deserves death because God is holy and God is perfect. God made you perfect also. God made us human beings perfect until we decided to sin. It's the law of sin and death. There's consequences for everything in this life. There are consequences for your sin. You might feel like there's no consequences for drinking and sleeping around because nothing happens right after. But that's because God is graceful. God has mercy upon you, you know? Because sin, in the Old Testament, they had to have atonement for their sin. The Bible says there's life in the blood, folks. So when you sin, if someone needs to shed their blood, but in the Old Testament, they shed the blood of animals instead of their own sin. And Jesus Christ, He's called the Lamb of God for a reason. Because Jesus Christ shed His blood for the whole world. So I separate us cutting up animals and stuff for atonement for our sins. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God who died for the sins of the world. And His blood makes us righteous in the eyes of God. Because without the, without the blood of Jesus in your life, you're dead, people. Without the blood of Jesus, you're spiritually dead. You're, you're disconnected from God. Jesus says you must be born again. See, in this life, without blood, you would die. Without your blood in your body, you would die. So without the blood of Jesus, you're going to spiritually die. That's how that works. The blood of Jesus Christ is royal blood. It's God's own blood. God is life. So his blood will give you life. Because a lot of people, you're walking in spiritual death of insecurities and depression. All this stuff is death. If you had God's life in you, you'd be full of joy, full of happiness, full of contentment with your life. See, with God, you're content with your life. You're not looking to become rich overnight. You're not looking for all these girls and stuff in clubs because you're satisfied with Christ. But without Jesus Christ, you're never satisfied. You're on the same merry-go-round train of everybody else, seeking pleasure, seeking sex, seeking drugs. Coming to Las Vegas to fill a void that can never be filled. It's a sad lifestyle. You're being deceived by your society. You're being deceived by Las Vegas and the devil. The devil's been doing this for a long time. He knows what you want, folks. He knows what you like. He knows what you want when you live inside your flesh. Because guess what? We're all the same. We all have a body, soul, and a spirit. And the devil knows if you're not born again, you're gonna live in the you're gonna live in the flesh. And that's drunkenness, that's idolatry, adultery, fornication, cussing, stealing, robbing. If you don't know Christ, you're gonna do these things by the fault. By the fault, you're gonna do these things. You cannot please God while living in your flesh. You cannot know God while living in sin. God is far away from the wicked, says the Bible. God is far away from sinners. So many people feel like, hey man, if God is real, why don't we all know God? Because most of the world live in sin. You're not going to know God when you're living in sin. Adam and Eve said one time, God said, get out. God said, get out the garden. You sinned one time. So God really hates sin. 
but Jesus Christ is reconciling the world by his blood. So by the blood of Jesus Christ, you can know God. By the blood of Jesus, you can get to know your Father in heaven. Jesus Christ says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. So to get to your heavenly Father, you have to go through Jesus Christ, which is the word of God manifested in the flesh. Without Jesus Christ, you're not going anywhere good when you die. I'm telling you this right now, folks. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if Jesus Christ is not your best friend, then it's going to be a bad time for you when you die. A lot of people want to say, R.I.P., man, he lived a good life. He, he was so cool in school. God doesn't care about how cool you are in school. God cares about are, are you obedient or not. Are you obedient? God doesn't care if you're famous. God doesn't care if you're famous, if you're beautiful, if you're handsome. It has nothing to do with salvation. God wants you to repent. God wants you to, if I want you to respect yourself and love your neighbor as you love yourself. God doesn't care about how cool you want to be on TikTok. It's not important at all. The devil has you distracted in silly things, folks. You're distracted in silly things. You want to follow trends, but you're not want to follow Christ. These trends are making you folks insecure. You're trying to be something you're not. You're trying to go to a standard that you can't achieve. These beauty standards you can't achieve. Women out here doing Photoshop and stuff, it's horrible. Women out here getting plastic surgery, because these women have no self-love for themselves. Women are being deceived by social media, and the guys out here are putting money into it. This is a horrible generation. This generation is confused. People don't know if they're a girl or a guy no more. This generation is full of rejection. People are rejected. And you people are so rejected, you even start rejecting your own gender, folks. You reject your own gender. That's how rejected this generation is. This is terrible, folks. God wants you to be accepted and beloved for who you are. But the world says, you know what? Since your life sucks, go change yourself. If you don't like yourself, just go change yourself. Go be a deer. Go be a unicorn. Because no one likes you the way you are. That's what the devil says. And you wicked people, you're like, oh yeah, man. Be what you want, man. Live your best life. Be what you want. That's wicked. It's because you don't care about folks. You don't care about the truth. You care about lies because you want to live in a lie. Your lifestyle is a lie because you know getting drunk, sleeping around is terrible. You know that's a horrible lifestyle. You know people getting sex changes at a young age is not good. But you would never tell someone that why because you're selfish. You don't love your neighbor. You don't love your neighbor. A lot of people, you want to use and abuse your neighbor. You want to scam people. You want to use girls for their bodies and stuff. You want to walk these one night stands. You don't love your neighbor. You abuse your neighbor. And you're a wicked person. And God's going to judge you if you don't repent. So we're not all children of God. Children of God don't live a lifestyle like this. Children of God are not butt shaking in the club. That's not what children of God do. The Pope lied to you, folks. The Pope lied to you. The Pope's a false prophet. The Pope is not even in the Bible. But many folks, you don't know that because you don't read the Bible. There's many people, many religions. You say you're a Muslim, but you never read the Quran. You say you're a Christian, but you never read the Bible. You people really got to know who you are. Who, what's your identity in Christ? God bless you, man. God bless you. What's your identity in Christ? Because a lot of folks are so lost. You're looking for someone to tell you who you are. That's why you go to Zodiac signs. You think you're a Pisces. You think you're a Capricorn. You think you're an Aries. Or Sagittarius, because you don't know who you are. That's the life without God. See, if, as a child of God, you know who you are. King David knew who he was. The people who knew God, they knew exactly who they was. They weren't out there confused about gender and trying to be this and all that, all these zodiac signs, they knew who they was. But since you don't know God, you're looking for something to tell you who, who, who you are. And a lot of people, this society has ruined all types of family structures and stuff. Men can't be men anymore. Women can't be women. Guys trying to be like Andrew Tate. Women trying to be like Cardi B. This is terrible, people. These are bad role models for your kids. Your kids are little kids. They're little years old. Wearing little uh, revealing clothes at a young age. Guys out here being trying to be super, super tough for no reason. Trying to impress girls. I don't know what guys are doing nowadays, but it's sad. All guys... All guys want to be some fake alpha male, but Jesus Christ is an alpha and omega, people. There's nothing alpha about you masturbating every day. That's not alpha. There's nothing alpha about you chasing girls every weekend. That's not alpha at all. 
So why do we do this stuff? Why do we think we're so big and bad? Because we got money, we got muscles, we got status. God doesn't care, people. God doesn't care. You're being deceived by social media. You're being deceived by society. You're being deceived by Las Vegas. Because Las Vegas says this is what's important in life. This person on the billboard, this car, this money, this fashion brand. The world says this is important. And if you have this stuff, then you're important too. But that's not true. You're already important in the eyes of God. You already have value in the eyes of God, rich or poor. But the devil has you chasing these things, these materialistic things. You're trying to find value in yourself. And many people, you go overboard with it. You judge people by what they wear. You're like, hey, bro, my shoes cost more than your rent. All this stuff is pride. It's narcissism. This stuff is devilish. Jesus Christ came down. God came down. He was poor. Jesus was not rich out here doing miracles. Jesus Christ was poor. He still did miracles. He obeyed the Father. He raised the dead. So imagine if the creator of the universe came down. He could have destroyed everybody, but he was humble. Jesus Christ was a humble servant. So this is why we must be a humble servant like Christ. Christ came down to be an example how we should live life, not full of pride, not full of me, me, me. It's not about you, people. It's not about you. I know the world says, hey, it's all about you, man. Live your best life. But that, that's a lie. Don't be a fool. Life is not about you. There's 8 billion people on this world, and you just want to live for yourself. That's selfishness. Because the world is in darkness. People are full of depression. People have no hope. And that's why people come to Las Vegas to try to find some type of um, happiness. But all this stuff is temporary. It's all temporary and it's, and it's fleeting, it's fading. It's not reliable. Sin is not reliable. You feel good one day, then you feel terrible the next day. You get high one night, then you have to come back down and you still got depression. You still have suicidal thoughts. So sin is a liar. The devil is the father of all lies. So who told you this lifestyle is cool? Who told you? Who lied to you? I can tell, I can name a couple of people. Your own government, celebrities, athletes, they're lying to you. These people are not happy. It's easy to put a smile on on the camera, but, but behind closed doors, these people are these people are suicidal. That's why many celebrities kill themselves. And you folks, you don't understand that. You're like, hey man, this person, he had, he had all the money. He was famous. He was rich. Like, why did he kill himself? Because money doesn't bring happiness. If I gave you $10 million, folks, you still won't be happy. Because guess what? All the money in the world will not get away of your demons. Your, your demons will still be attached to you. All your trauma will still be attached to you even if you're a millionaire. So right now, if you're poor and depressed, if I give you $10 million, you just be rich and depressed. That's how that works. And folks, riches don't make you happy. That's why all of the buddies rappers hate themselves. A lot of people are falling for the lie. This generation is so gullible because you look, you believe everything you see, you believe everything you see, but you don't have any discernment. And this is how the devil can fool you. This is how the devil can deceive you. Because you must understand, people. You must understand. The Bible says, "Turn to the wickedness, profit nothing." Turn to the rich. Just send the wicked and profit nothing. The righteous and living from death. So the only thing to get you away from the clutches of death is the blood of Jesus Christ. Only the blood of Jesus can save you from death. Because all the money in the world is not going to save you from hell fire. There's plenty of rich people in hell under your feet. There's plenty of people under your feet in hell because of sin. And a lot of people are in hell because they love my biggest sin. What happens, whatever happens in Vegas is not staying in Vegas, people. God is keeping account of it. God, God can remember all your sin if you don't repent. So you really gotta humble yourself to get right with Christ and don't be deceived by the world. And stop being deceived. 
by saying to the world, all of the mild music, all the mild movies, to start with demonic. Because there's, there are evil spirits inside evil music. The music talks about degrading women, talks about getting, getting people a headshot on the street corner. All that stuff is demonic music.
it doesn't belong to that weird pervert dude behind the screen. And a lot of women, you don't you don't get this talk because society is not going to tell you you're valuable. Society is not going to tell you you have value except for your body. So nowadays, society values women based off how how their body looks. You know, this girl has a big butt. She has nice boobs. She has big lips. And that's not how you're supposed to value women, people. And that's why women are insecure about their bodies. Women want to kill themselves because they don't have the right the right figure and stuff like this. And what are you guys doing? You're not making it better when you put money into this stuff. You pay money to, for these women to get all these implants and stuff. You guys are making it worse. And God is shaking his hands this generation because God gave you his laws. God gave you his commandments for you to know the truth. So you won't be deceived, but you people are not coming to the knowledge of the truth. You have all this education in school, but you're, but you're still living in foolishness because you don't have God. Because you can have a degree and still have no common sense. Look at this generation. People can be doctors, but don't know how many genders there are. So that's, that's how the world is. That's reality. Because you got to come to reality. We don't live in our own fantasy bubbles. We have to come out of the anime, better to come out of all the cartoon stuff and really focus on the Lord. Because if Jesus Christ is coming back, God is coming back down here. He's coming back to make war against all the wicked. And there's a lot of wicked people in this world. There's more wicked people than good people in this world. And there's a lot of wicked people in Las Vegas. So you can understand how patient God is. God loves his creation, but God will bring judgment upon his creation. There's a reason why God flooded the world. There's a reason why God flooded the world, people. God doesn't care about majority vote for mankind. God's not looking for your opinion. God's not going to look for your opinion. When God told Noah, hey Noah, build the ark because I'm going to flood the world. He didn't say, hey Noah, do you think I should flood the world? No, he didn't ask Noah. He says, Noah, I'm going to flood the world, build an ark. So God's not going to ask you your opinion about how you should judge mankind. God's going to tell you what's going to happen and you got to prepare. A lot of people, you want to argue back and forth with the preacher. You want to be like, why would God do this? Why would God do that? You got to understand this, folks. God is not going to take orders from you. You are created. You are a created being. You are made in the image of God. Your only purpose in life is to live for God and honor God and fear and fear Him, keep His, keep His commandments. That's your only duty in life is to fear God and keep His commandments. And it's very, it's very foolish for a human being to question Almighty God. So don't be foolish. Stop questioning God and question your life. Question why you live in sin so much. Question why you can't obey God. Question why many people are full of, of depression. Why, uh, uh, question why the suicide rate is going up, people. Why is the suicide rate going up? And mankind, if people are so happy, and everyone got, people got all this technology, people go on vacations and stuff, then why is the suicide rate going up? Why is America so full of suicide and depression? You're, you're a country with more than any all these other countries. And why are people depressed? Because you don't know God. All these other countries with less than you have more joy because they have Jesus Christ and because they're humble. We have a whole nation full of narcissists. A whole nation full of prideful people. You have a whole nation full of people who live for their sexual desires. And that's why the suicide rate is going down. That's why people are depressed, because you live for yourself. If you live for yourself, you're going to hate yourself. You're going to hate life. Because you're not made to live for yourself. You're made to live for God. You're made to live for God and do His will. You do your own will. It's going to lead to all types of destruction. Because, people, you're not doing your own thing. You're going to follow somebody in life. You're going to follow Christ or you're going to follow Satan. And Satan will have you do his own will. And many people, you're agents of Satan. You, th you say, hey man, do what I want. No, you're not. You're doing Satan's job. You're out here selling drugs. You're out here killing people, robbing people. You're doing the work of Satan. Literally doing the work of Satan and claiming you're free. No one's free without Christ. No one's free without Christ, folks. You know why the government treats you like slaves? Because you are slaves without Jesus. That's why they, they put all these mandates and stuff. And they treat you like slaves because you are a slave without Jesus Christ. You have no self-control without Jesus Christ. You cannot think properly without the mind of Christ. And this is why your government treats you like a joke. 
because you are a girl, because you live in yeah, sin. Yeah, if you're up playing in Hollywood, because no sinner, stay on that side no of this. No sinner is going to think wisely. No sinner, no sinner is going to make proper decisions for their life. The Bible says the wise will inherit glory. The shame should be the promotion of fools. So God wants wise children. God wants wise children. It doesn't mean being a doctor, but means being in the word of God and studying it and having wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in God, in the world, and avoiding sin. God wants wise children, not foolish children. So what is the point of destroying yourself with drugs and stuff? It's for you, man. Hey, I agree, man. Wickedness never was happiness. Man, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. So, folks, this is why Jesus Christ wants you to seek wisdom. Christ wants you to seek wisdom that comes from above. Wisdom that comes from above. The wisdom down here is, is devilish and sensual. The wisdom down here is very evil. It's very um, fleshy. You know, because God says, you know, respect your body. Wait till marriage. But the world says, hey, man, we're animals. We gotta reproduce. God's got a lot of testosterone, so and they gotta sleep around. That's that's devilish wisdom. That's earthly wisdom. So the Bible says, God says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his ways are higher than our ways. So God's ways are higher than the earth's um philosophy. So this is why Jesus Christ says, Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. That's a that's a heavenly mentality. Because if you ask a if you ask a worldly person, if you ask a, a sinner, be like, hey bro, you should love your enemies. They'd be like, bro, why should I love this guy? This guy, this guy did me wrong. Because they don't understand the things of heaven. So this is why you must set your affection on things above, not on not on things on the earth. Because the things on the earth are going to ruin you. The things out here on this planet, if you don't have Jesus Christ, is meant to destroy you. Sin is meant to destroy you. Sin equals death, folks. You know why you die? Because of sin. You have a curse of death because of sin. But Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. Jesus Christ became a curse for us. So faith in him, you will be resurrected with life, eternal life. Hallelujah. So without Jesus Christ, folks, you are actually cursed to damnation. If you die right now, if a guy come out here and start shooting everybody, you didn't have Jesus Christ, you will go straight to hell. Because your sins are not paid by the blood of Jesus. God doesn't know you. You don't belong to God. You're living in wickedness. We're not all the same in the eyes of God. God does not look at us all the same. In this life, there's saints and there's sinners. Everybody's not a sinner. People want to say things like, we sin every day. No, we don't. Sin is a choice. Sin is not an accident. See, sin, you don't sin by existing, folks. To sin, you have to actually make a choice to sin. You made a choice to smack that girl's butt that's not your wife. You made a, you made a choice to get drunk. These are choices. Sin are choices. So you can choose not to sin. It's possible to choose not to sin, people. It, it is. But people, you say, but it's hard. You know why it's hard? Because your flesh is weak. The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Your flesh is super weak. These demons are going after your flesh. They're enticing you to, to live a lifestyle of homosexuality and perversion and drunkenness. These demons are in your ear telling you, just hit one more blunt, get one more drink, go, go sleep around, go to that club. These demons are telling you folks what to do. You're being led astray by the voice of Satan. When the voice of God comes, these demons get irritated. They get very mad and say, hey, man, don't listen to that preacher, man. Don't listen to that preacher. Because the demons know if you come to Christ, you'll be set free. You'll be set free if you come to Christ. Because right now, you're a, you're a spiritual slave. You're a slave. You're not free, folks. You're a slave to your own depression. Your own sexual desires are getting weird and weird every single year. It's getting very dark out here in this nation. People are becoming perverts to the point where people have pervert parades. They're called gay pride, gay pride parades. You got guys out here with speedos on in the, in the street, shaking their butt from the little kids. You people in America just stay at home and say, oh yeah, man, live your best life. Terrible people, terrible country. Terrible, terrible, terrible.
All I gotta say is, folks, perverts support perverts. That's all I gotta say. Perverts support perverts. Because when you live in sexual immorality, you're gonna you're gonna promote everyone else who lives in sexual immorality. But when you have actually self-respect and purity, you're gonna hate all types of sexual immorality. But the thing is, most Americans are living in perversion. Most Americans are living in perversion. You know, when people go overseas for child pornography, they, they think Americans, it's actually coming for Americans to be pedophiles overseas. And that's why it's so easy to, for people to catch um, Americans being pedophiles. Because America, you have a reputation overseas and it's not good, folks. It's not good. Because the whole world is not like America. The whole world is not like America. Everyone is not gay. Everyone is not weird you know everyone is not conceited and entitled overseas so a lot of people you really got to get a perspective on the world and know that there's more to the world than america because a lot of people feel like everything is just about america but it's not a lot of countries just hate america because america want to push all kinds of perversion and weirdness on other countries and, and, it, and america are full of bullies folks you folks are perverted bullies you're a perverted bully. You have power, you have money, and you want to abuse it to other people. The government, the masses, you folks are bullies. And, and God is going to send judgment upon you because of this. So you got to understand, we, we're in the last days. We're in the last days. God's judgment is coming down upon the wicked. And if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, if you're not coming to the Lord in true repentance, it's going to be tribulation and anguish to every soul of man that does evil. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile, then to the Greek. If you're not coming to repentance to the Lord Jesus Christ, there's going to be hell fire. Jesus Christ, his wrath is a body over your head because of your sin. God does not love your sin. God hates your sin, people. He hates your sin. God is patient with you. He wants you to repent. The Bible says the goodness of God should lead you to repentance. So God's mercy and grace should lead you to repentance. But do not think for one second, each day you, you ignore God, each day you don't care about Jesus. God is angry at the wicked every single day. God wakes you up every single day, and every single day you smack him in the face. You think God loves that? No, he doesn't love that. So don't think God loves your disobedience. He does not love your disobedience. Imagine if you had a if you had a child that you fed every day, but when you woke up, your child said, "Forget you, mom. F you, mom. I hate you, mom. You're nothing, mom." That's what you're doing to God, folks. Every single day you wake up and, and ignore Jesus Christ. That's what you're doing. You're saying you don't need God. You're saying you're you're, uh, you're saying God is not a poor. You're saying silly things like God is not real. All this stuff is just blasphemy in the eyes of God. Because everyone knows there's a God, says the Bible. You know there's a God, but your foolish heart has become darkened. So except for serving the true living God, a lot of people, you serve the creation. You serve idols. You serve little Buddha statues in your, in your, in your house. You have little dream catchers and stuff. You have chakra. You have crystals. You have giant rocks and stuff. You serve, but you don't serve the true living God. This is folly. This is deception. To bow down to a statue, to bow down to a Mary statue. A statue cannot hear you. It has ears, it cannot hear. It has eyes, it cannot see. Your Mary statue is not going to help you when you're down. Your Mary statue is not going to judge you on a day of judgment, people. Mary's in heaven. Mary can't hear you, folks. Mary's not worried about you. Mary's in paradise. You need to get right with Jesus and pray to Jesus. Stop praying to Mary. Stop praying to statues of Peter. All those people are in heaven. So start praying to dead people and pray to a living God. God is alive. He hears you. Pray to someone that's alive. Stop praying to dead people. Follow someone that's alive. Jesus Christ is alive. Stop following dead prophets like Muhammad. Muhammad is dead. He's dead. Buddha's dead. Confucius is dead. These people are dead. So why follow a dead man? You can follow someone that's alive. You can follow somebody who's giving out eternal life. Jesus Christ says he is eternal life christ is eternal life and if you put your faith in him you will receive eternal life but it's by faith by faith through grace through faith we're saved by grace folks we are saved but who do you have your faith in people what's your faith in your faith not in god you're failing god you're failing your life if you do not have your faith in god 
because everything in life is a test. God is testing you to see, are you going to live for the world? Are you going to live for Him? Are you going to live for God? Are you going to live for the world? And many folks, you're failing God because you're not in the Word of God. You're not, you're not crucifying your family. Jesus Christ says, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself and pick up your cross. So it's not easy to follow Jesus, folks. It's not easy to follow Jesus when everyone in the world is following Satan. It's not easy. This is what the Bible says. We walk by faith, not by sight. We can't, we can't follow things that we see. Just because we see a lot of people go to Las Vegas doesn't mean we got to go there. Just because we see celebrities get high and get drunk doesn't mean we have to live like that, folks. We can't live by sight. We must live by faith. Because if you just live by sight, you're going to be gullible. You're going to be very gullible to be deceived and say things like, Well, Mom, everybody else is twerking on the school building. Why can I do it, Mom? What are you talking about? Just because you see people do it does not mean it's okay. This is why you must listen to the Word of God. Your heart must be transformed by the Word of God. Your mind must, re must be renewed by the Word of God. Because the prince of the power of the air, Satan, is deceiving you. He's deceiving all the children of disobedience. All the children of disobedience are children who don't obey the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord will endure forever. God's word has been here forever. It will, it will continue. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away, says the Lord. So God's words are life. The flesh profits nothing. So living in America, there's no excuse why you don't know God. There's no excuse why you're not living for God if you're not in if, if you live in America because you have all the resources to know who Jesus is. This is not a third world country, folks. This is not a third world country. But this generation is full of pride and narcissism. All this fake science has you deceived, folks. You think you come from a monkey. You have no common sense anymore. You think you come from a fish. This is terrible, people. This is terrible. You have all this technology, and you still can't find God. You have all this science, supposed science, and people still don't believe in God. God made his creation obvious. God is obvious. Creation speaks that there's a God. There's a reason why all the religions believe in God because everyone knows there has to be a creator of all this stuff. There weren't atheists back then, folks. There weren't really atheists back then. There were fake religions. But, 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 but folks, to say there's no God, that's worse than all the other fake religions. That's worse than a Viking. That's worse than believing, uh, that's worse than someone say, I believe in a, um, the spaghetti monster. You gotta understand, folks, to be an atheist is, is, is really, really um, low on a totem pole of intelligence. Because it's common sense to believe in God. The Bible says even demons believe in God and they tremble, folks. The, the, the devil believes in God. Everyone believes in God, folks. So let's not play dumb. Let's not, let's, let's not play um, super intelligent because you're really not. And you're really not. So a lot of people, a lot of, you're, a lot of people's gods or science. So this generation, you, you make gods. This world is making gods. Some people think they're a god and they're not. Some people think science is god. Some people think, you know, Buddha's god or Allah's god. But there's only one god. There's only one god. The devil been busy causing confusion in mankind. And God is letting this happen because God wants people to seek him. God wants people to seek him. God wants people to actually love him. Because if you actually love God, you will get through all the lies, you get through all, all the trash nonsense, you will find Jesus Christ. But the reason why you don't have Jesus Christ is because you don't love God. You don't, you don't want to spend time looking for the truth. You don't want to spend time reading your Bible. That's why you believe in false religions. That's why you're a Buddhist. That's why you're a Hindu. You're a Mormon. You're Jehovah's Witness. Because you're not spending time seeking the truth. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, I am the truth, not a truth, not uh, another truth. Jesus Christ says, I am the truth. So that means all truth, folks, all truth starts at Jesus. It starts with God. So without Jesus Christ in your life, your foundation is going to be crumbling. It's going to be very, very wavy. 
jazzy's atheist hey man how how the world come like oh, i don't know man it came from nothing nothing came from nothing it makes absolutely no sense he was not an alcoholic he can drink wine not get not get drunk it's possible i promise you it was pure wine it was holy wine we weren't getting drunk folks so you can drink wine and not get drunk folks let's not be silly now let's not be silly folks but for real though folks it's for real so god folks all foundation of truth starts at jesus it starts at god so this is why atheists can't explain the creation of the world because they want to explain things without god you know how silly it is to try to explain creation by the, by the creator and they can't do it they're trying to they're trying to make you believe that we evolved from monkeys millions and millions of years ago atheism folks it takes a lot of faith to be an atheist it takes a lot of faith to be an atheist because there's no common sense there's no logic in atheism it takes a lot of faith a lot of faith to be an atheist to say nothing made nothing so people have a problem with the bible was made 2000 years ago but they, but they believe they came from a monkey millions of years ago millions of years ago that's more believable than a bible that was written 2000 years ago so atheists say, hey man, you know, you started as a germ, then like this lightning came down, then you was a fish, then the fish came to land, then they became a mammal, they became a monkey, they became a human being. All this stuff, it, this is fairy tale stuff, folks. It's not how life works. Because how can a fish go on land? How, how does a fish get a heart? How does a fish get legs and a lamb and a brain? What, what part grows first? As a, if a fish turns into a monkey, which part of it grows first? Is it like half leg, half heart? Is it like half brain, half fin? Like how does that even look? But you folks don't even think about that because you believe everything you hear. You believe everything people say to you, you actually don't think about it. Because guess what society has taught you to not question things. Because guess what, if you question a government, they shame you. They shame you if you question them. They're like, oh, bro, you're a conspiracy. Oh, you're crazy, man. Or they try to shame you, folks. It, it's, a, it's a satanic tactic to know you're, you're in the truth, but people shame you like you're stupid. They want to gaslight you, folks. And in this generation, you're, you're being deceived and on, on great levels because you're not used to thinking for yourself. You're to, you want people to think for you. You want people to think for you. And that's, that's slavery. That, that, that is just slavery. Uh, and it's sad that many people in America are spiritual slaves. You know, you do things, you don't know why you're doing it. You're wearing things, you don't know why you're wearing it. You know, you do you do everything your favorite celebrity does. And, and, and that's sad, people. So this is how you know in this life, you're going to follow somebody. You're going to worship something in this world. Either you're going to worship God, your creator, or you're going to worship a creation. You're going to worship a person. So some people, they worship Trump. Some people worship Beyonce. Some people worship Drake. You're going to worship somebody in this life, people. Or you're going to worship yourself. You can do that too, but that's called pride. That's, that's called narcissism. And there's a lot of narcissists in this world. And look how the world is, full of narcissism. It's not, it's not a fun place. So the best way to be is to worship God, to live in humility. Because even God was humble. Even God was humble. So why are you so prideful? God is eternal, he's everlasting. He came down full of humility, and you live for like 80 years, and you're full of pride. It doesn't make any sense. See how much mercy and grace God has for us human beings. Because God could destroy you right now, and God will be justified for it. But God loves you so much that God sends his messengers to warn you of the wrath to come. So God warns you, this is love, folks. It is love to warn you to turn away from wrath. A lot of people in America, you're so sensitive, yet you, you don't know what love is. You think you're condemning you, but no one's condemning you, people. I'm not here warning you because I love you. I want you to have eternal life. This is what it means to love your neighbor. We you see your neighbor going to hell. You don't let your neighbor just go to hell. But there's a lot of there's a lot of selfish Christians in America. There's a lot of so-called Christians who know the truth of the gospel, but they won't tell you the gospel. They won't go out of their comfort zone and preach the true gospel because they're scared of the world or they don't have love in their hearts. But you, but you, children of God who have, who have love will preach the gospel. That's why Jesus and the disciples, they preach the gospel. The disciples, they died for the gospel. 
So even though the world's not going to like you for preaching the gospel, if you're a true Christian, you will still preach the gospel because you love your neighbor. You love God most importantly, but you love people. You love people's souls. You want people's souls to go to heaven. Because there's a lot of cupcake Christianity, and it's not real Christianity. And that's why all these other fake religions are gaining steam, like Islam and witchcraft. Like, Islam is not a good religion, people. It is not a good religion, especially for women. Especially for women. Women over there in, in, um, in Iran, they're oppressed. They, they don't like it over there. Yeah, all these people out here telling, be telling, saying they're Muslims. A re, being a real Muslim, people, is not something you want to be. Because in the Quran, it says to kill the Jews, kill the Christians. And that's why overseas are killing people. But a lot of people in America, you live a fake lifestyle. You're fake Christians, you're fake Hindus, you're fake Muslims. You actually don't live out what your religion says. The only, the only people that's actually living out what they say they are is like a, the LGBTQ and the witches. And that's terrible. But all these other religions in America, we have a lot of just fake Muslims, fake Hindus, fake Christians. Like these people are not actually who they say they are. You have Muslims out here, you know, trying to get along with Christians. And look, as Christians, we, we're supposed to be gentle, we're supposed to be kind with, for everybody. But as Christians, we're not called to accept all religions because Christianity is the true religion. Christ, Christians have the one true living God. So there's only one God in the world. There aren't 10,000 gods, there aren't Allah, there, there isn't. Um, this isn't a Marvel comic book with all types of gods. There's only one God. His name is Jesus Christ. So every other God is fake by the fall. Every other God is not real. All they're just demons. There's a lot of demons out here. Of uh, false gods disguised as um, demons. In the Old Testament, people would bow down to these demons. They would sacrifice their kids to these demonic spirits. These statues. They have these statues lit with fire and throw their kids into the fire. Those were the gods of back then. And now the devil has switched up his stuff. Now the devil has all these other fake gods out here. Now there's, now there's a lot of fake Jesuses. There's a lot of fake Jesus in the world now. You have the Mormon Jesus. You, you, you have the Jehovah's Witness Jesus. And you have the corny American Jesus. That's not the real Jesus. The Jesus Christ that says, hey man, he loves me no matter what. I can get drunk, get high, get laid, and still go to heaven. Yeah, that's the fake American version of Jesus. That's not the real Jesus of the Bible. The American Jesus is the worst Jesus of them all. Because you think you have a lot of Christians out here who say, I love Jesus, man. And they out here getting drunk, out here going to clubs and stuff. And they have a cross in their neck and they think they're saved. You're, you're, not, you're not saved. You're not saved if you're still living in sin. But Jesus Christ sets you free from sin. You should be free from sin if you have the true Jesus, the true Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But a lot of people have a fake American corny Jesus that's not the real Jesus. So, so this is why to get to know the real Jesus, you got to open up your Bible and ask the Lord to actually reveal himself to you. And stop being deceived. Stop going along with the crowd. Because God is not okay with sin. That's the reason why God died for your sin. You think God's okay with sin if he died for your sin? That doesn't make any sense. You see, you see how bloody Jesus was? That was your sin, folks. Your sin made Jesus Christ bloody. So why do you have an idea that Jesus is okay with sin? He's not okay with sin. He loved you enough to die for your sin, but to think that he's okay with your sin, you're deceiving yourself. Jesus Christ says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Because guess what? Many people are going to be deceived. The devil is a master deceiver. He's been doing it for a long time. The devil can deceive angels with more intelligence than human beings. How many human beings, how many human beings can the devil deceive? Human beings who are full of drunkenness, full of arrogance, full of pride, full of narcissism. How many people can the devil conceive? A lot. Especially people who live in sin. If you live holy and righteously, you won't be deceived. But if you live in sin, Paul, you're going to be deceived by the devil, just, just by the fall. Because you're not going to do the things of God. You're not going to be in the will of God. You're going to believe in all these fake philosophies and, and all types of um, doctrines of demons out here. And the Bible says in the last days, it'll be like this. It'll be like this in the last days. Doctrines of demons. My question. <laughs> So 
Well, folks, so Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is warning you to not be deceived and to come out of sin and be born again. Jesus Christ said he has the way to eternal life. And the devil's a copycat. The devil wants to 